everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I have got seven tips for presenting in English. These tips are really going to help you improve your presentation skills. Now, the vast majority of us at some point in our lives are going to have to give presentations. We're going to have to speak in public. And it was actually voted the scariest thing above death and spiders in a recent study. So it's quite obvious that it's something that a lot of people hate. I have to present a lot. I hated it at first, but now I really enjoy it because I've learnt how to do it properly and I'd like to help you guys out today. Quickly, if you really want to kickstart your English, I cannot recommend enough the Lingoda Language Marathon. You can get a 90-day language course worth 567 euros completely refunded to you, but you have to be quick because A, spaces are almost filled, and B, if you want to do the English course, you've only got until the 19th of April to sign up. I've got a video explaining all of the details, which you can see up here, but basically you sign up for the marathon, you do 30 classes every month for three months, and if you complete all of these classes, Lingoda will give you a full refund, that's 567 euros. There is also a half marathon option, which results in a 50% refund upon completion, and that is just 15 classes per month. There are options for English and German. I feel so passionately about this campaign. As a teacher myself, and somebody who's worked independently teaching students for many years, it's such a generous offer. I mean, they're offering to refund it all back to you. And to get the refund, all you have to do is learn loads of English, i.e. 90 classes with real native qualified teachers what's not to like? <laughs> and you know what? Even if you don't complete it, at the very least, you've done 90 days of English. If you're interested and you feel that you are dedicated enough to do the language marathon properly, all you have to do is click on the link in the description box and use the code RUN5. This will discount your five euro entry fee. All you will pay is 50 cents and that's just to make sure they have your credit card details. Good luck to everyone taking part. I think you've done an amazing thing and I cannot wait to hear your feedback. Right, let's talk about my first tip. This is especially important for non-native speakers. It is, don't agonize over your accent. Forget your accent. I always say, rather than working on reducing your accent, work on improving your pronunciation. Accents are part of our culture and our heritage. Pronunciation is the way we say sounds and words. And the best way to improve your pronunciation is slow down. I've given lots of presentations and I have watched lots of presentations and I can tell you the best presentations are the slower presentations. It's especially important at the beginning of your presentation because everybody has an accent, natives have accents too, but we need to give the audience time to get used to and to adapt to our accent. Another reason to embrace your accent is covering up an accent or putting on this fake posh voice might actually come across as insincere to an audience. You might come across as fake. They might not trust you as much. Now, when I'm talking to my friends and my family, I don't always speak like this because I'm not presenting but I definitely don't put on a fake accent. I'm simply working on my pronunciation. I want to make sure I pronounce every relevant and necessary phoneme so that you guys can understand me. When students come to me and they say, Lucy, help me get rid of my accent, I tell them, no, I'm not going to help you get rid of your accent. I think that's very negative. I will help you improve your pronunciation. In my opinion, the only people that should be getting rid of their accents are actors. Otherwise, unless it's something you do for a hobby, it's a little bit of a waste of time. Number two, use pauses to your advantage. Pauses are great for so many reasons. As we said in the previous point about slowing down, they give the audience time to understand what you're saying. A very clear example of this is when I shout a question to my boyfriend who is normally downstairs. He will immediately reply to that question with, what? <laughs> I know, instead of repeating myself, if I wait three or four seconds, he will then answer my question because he's had time to process what I've said. 
it's the same for your audience. It will sometimes take them a couple of seconds to understand what you've said, so use a pause to your advantage. Pauses also give you time to think and also time to have a break. Our tongues can get in a twist. You guys only get to see the finished cut of what I film here, but I have to repeat things again and again and again because my tongue doesn't always go where I want it to. When I make a mistake, I pause, I have a break, and then I try again, and it normally comes out a lot better. Take three or four seconds to plan what you're going to say next, and then you can be confident in your delivery. Now, the best speakers that I've listened to are people that make the audience feel as if the pauses have been included for their advantage. So the audience might think that the pause has been used for emphasis, they've said something important, they want them to consider how important this point is, when actually they just needed to think about what they were going to say next. The speaker may make the audience feel as if they've left a pause to give them time to think, when actually they're just skimming the audience, making sure that everyone's understood because they're not sure if they said it quite right. Number three, now this one is a controversial one and I'm not going to say absolutely don't say this, um, but I will say reconsider saying this at the beginning of your presentations. If I go to another country and someone is giving a presentation in English, which happens a lot and wow that people are presenting in another language, nine out of 10 times they will start the presentation by saying, sorry for my English. Now, I'm not sure that I really like this. I feel like you can take more control over the situation. Why not try saying something like, English isn't my first language, but I'm going to try my best here. Instead of apologizing and being all small and, and seeming a bit unconfident, you're taking ownership. English isn't my first language, but I'm going to try my best. It's unapologetic, it's confident, and it makes you seem like you're totally in control and the audience is going to want to work with you. So this is a, an opportunity to participate here. In the comments below, I'd really like to know if you have heard any great alternatives to sorry for my English. Or you can say if you think sorry for my English is fine. I look forward to seeing what you have to say. Now, number four, you guys always knew I was going to mention this one. It is practice, but I want to say practice, but don't learn. You can tell when somebody has practiced a presentation or rehearsed a presentation, and you can also tell when they've learnt a presentation. The difference being that a practiced presentation is organic, it's genuine, it flows, and it's, it's trustworthy. You can trust what that person is saying. A learnt presentation is memorized, it's stagnant, and it's sterile. It's not interesting which is why you need to use number five, cue cards, to your advantage. This really ties in with number four. If you're allowed to use cue cards or speaker notes in your presentation, for goodness sake, please use them. Use them, they are so, so useful. You never know when you're going to be caught off guard, so it is so essential to have something up there with you. You don't have to have them in your hand, but have them up there. I've seen a lot of people get stage fright those who have speaker notes can quickly look back and figure out where they are. Those who don't stand up there like a lemon. Cue cards should be tiny little bullet points that keep you on track, that remind you where you are. They should not be a whole written presentation. I used to hate it at university. We'd give presentations in class and people would stand up there with two A4 papers of their entire speech. It doesn't look good, it doesn't look professional, it looks like you've written it the night before. You need to practice and rehearse multiple times just using your cue cards. So if you practice it loads, it will come out a little bit differently each time, but that's good because you're going to be preparing yourself for a multitude of situations. Number four, think about your body. Everyone is different. When I present, I like to have my feet apart I definitely don't walk around on stage. I have them planted on the floor and I like to use my two hands and my waist as a sort of pivot and I'll, I'll kind of talk like this. I've got loads of room to move 
but I'm not moving up and down. That's the distraction and also you can trip over, which is not what you want. So I like to stay in one place. I like to look really, really confident, chest out, great posture, and I try not to do my typical fidget things, which is touching my hair, touching my nose, touching my neck. So I really try not to do that. Before you go on stage, you want to think, am I going to walk up and down? Which is fine, but only if you're comfortable with the space. What is my sort of stance? I like to call this like a supergirl stance. How are you going to stand? Think about it so you go up there and you know exactly what to do. It's also a really good idea to identify the things that you keep doing over and over again, like fluffing hair, touching your eyelash because your hair's on your eyelash, itching, fiddling, doing thumb things. Think about them beforehand so you can quickly snap out of it if you're doing it. The last one, number seven, is dress to impress. This one can also be controversial, especially in the influencer industry because people like to look really casual. I would say just go one notch above the predicted dress code. If it's smart casual, lean towards the smart side. If it's office wear, wear a suit. It's always better to look overdressed as opposed to underdressed. It makes you look professional. It makes you feel good about yourself. And somebody who looks groomed is the kind of person that the audience is going to keep their eyes on. There's nothing worse than having the audience drift off. At the end of the day, you want to engage with your audience. And if you look scruffy and like you're not really meant to be there, are you going to engage with them? So have a think about that one. Right guys, those are my seven tips. If you have any other recommendations, please comment them down below. Don't forget to check out the Lingoda Language Marathon. There's additional information in the description box along with the link and the code which gives you a discounted entry fee. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram and I've got my Twitter. And I really recommend checking out my Instagram because we've got another book giveaway happening very soon. And I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah!